Christian Parenting. Welcome to Call to Love, where we discuss all things adoption and foster care and dive into the practical, the clinical, and most importantly, the biblical perspectives to help you and your family thrive. I'm Summer Colbert, adoptive mom, director of adoption and foster ministry, and champion for the Arkansas Baptist Children and Family Ministries. Adoption isn't just a process. It is an invitation to go on a journey with the Lord where you will experience life-changing opportunities to grow in your faith and learn to love in an entirely new way. One thing is for sure, being called to love means you will never be the same. Welcome, friends, to our first episode of Called to Love. I am so excited to begin this journey with you as we talk about all things adoption and how to thrive as adoptive families in our calling to love. Today and over the next few episodes, I really want to establish the framework and the mindset for this podcast and for us as Christian adoptive parents. And this really applies whether you are in the early stages of feeling called to take a first step toward adoption or you're in the throes of paperwork and process right now and you feel like you're drowning and it's never going to happen, or you may have been parenting your adopted child or children for some time now, but as Christian adoptive parents, the very reason we are on this journey is rooted in a common calling given to us by God to love and steward children who join our families in very unique ways. And every story is different and every story is special and every story is ordained by God. And ultimately, adoption means choosing to love someone that you haven't met yet, and oftentimes going to great lengths to bring them into your family. It means learning a new language, sometimes quite literally, and also a new language of connection and care. So we've got a lot to unpack as we go on this journey together, and as we begin our first ever episode, let's get started. There's a picture on my desk that is warped and bent. And it's a picture of me when I was 20 years old and on my first ever overseas mission trip. And I purposely sat it in front of me today just as an inspiration and reminder in beginning our journey together. And I'm looking at this 20-year-old girl who has no clue what she was about to embark on or how God was going to use the events, even of that week, In this picture, I'm surrounded by 10 beautiful, smiling faces in school uniforms, and one little girl in particular has her arm wrapped tight around me. And without realizing it, God used that little girl over the course of a week's mission trip to plant a seed in my heart that has affected the course of my life in a way that I could have never imagined. And it's honestly what God used to have me in this moment talking with you today. So I want to share a little bit of that story with you as we get started. Over spring break in 2003, dating myself a little bit, um, I was in college and I went with a group from my church on a mission trip to Belize in Central America, where we worked all week to build a new school um, for a local village called San Ignacio along the Belmopan River. And it was my first time overseas, like I said, and my first time really experiencing the realities of poverty and a lost world in desperate need of Jesus outside of my little bubble. And while all the guys did the manual labor in the jungle heat and humidity, which was brutal, I got the fun job of, I remember driving a stick shift geo tracker because I was the only girl on the team who knew how to drive a stick shift. Thanks, dad. And I went into the village each day for groceries and supplies to feed everybody as they came in from a hard day's work. And then we got to go visit the school children that we were serving and building that building for. And it was such a special time. And I remember on the first day of our trip, I was greeted by a very eager, a very curious and a very beautiful face. And she was sweet and bubbly and so excited to have visitors. And though our age difference spanned more than a decade, we became fast friends. 
And I remember she held my hand as she guided me all around her school, which basically consisted of concrete blocks stacked to form open classrooms with very little light or air circulation. And she showed me her desk with such joy and the board where she would regularly walk up to write answers to math questions. And we would skip through the muddy courtyard and and we giggled a lot, despite the fact that a very clear language barrier was present. And that was such a sweet time for me. On our last day, we took one last trip over to the school to say goodbye to the students. And my little friend quickly found me and grabbed my hand to resume our day, just like the ones before. And after only a very short time of play, it was time to say goodbye. There were hugs and several high fives later. And without really thinking about it, this little girl placed a coin in my hand and she looked up at me with her beautiful brown eyes and she smiled in a way that will forever be burned in my memory and I hugged her one last time and I forced myself into the van with tears forming and we began driving down the road and I sat quietly in this big travel van admiring the coin in my hand knowing full well that I would not see my little friend again And our team leader, who had traveled to this country many times, and he understood the people and their culture very well, he asked me if I knew what that little girl had just done. And I just kind of looked at him, and I shook my head to let him know that I was clueless, and I was trying to keep from bursting into tears at that point. And he explained to me, he said, that coin you're holding is that little girl's lunch money for the entire week. Well, I just lost it. Because essentially, she had given me everything she had. And here I am, this privileged girl from America who never was worried about where my next meal was coming from. And this little girl, out of a blessing and such generosity in her heart, just freely gave that to me. And so I'm just at this point, cue the waterworks, right? I'm, I'm bawling. And I started begging our group leader because we weren't that far away just to turn around and, and let me return it to her so that she wouldn't be without lunch money for the week. And he said, no, no, she gave it as a gift to honor you. And she would not want to take it back because it was her way of showing love. And my heart was just wrecked. And, you know, you think about it, only a short time together with limited words understood between us. And this precious child had given me all that she had. And what looked like a simple coin ended up being a lesson that would affect the course of my life. For years, I held on to that coin as a reminder of the impact that she had made. And right then and there, God planted a seed in my heart that would later prepare me for what he had all along. And just a few days later, my then boyfriend, who was on the trip with us, proposed and became my fiance. And we came back from that mission trip ready to plan an entirely new life together. And that's what we did. We got married in 2004, about a year and a half after this trip. And a few years in, we became parents to our oldest in 2007. And then we were blessed again with our second son four years later. And things were relatively easy, right? We were living a quiet life as a young family, and then God decided it was time for a new chapter, which I will share about in great detail in the next episode. So stay tuned because it's quite the roller coaster. If you listen to the trailer, you got a little teaser of that, and there are many details that I'm excited to share with you because it is a part of our story and how God has crafted this whole journey for us. But I think back to 20 years ago, and it's hard to imagine that these children whose faces I'm looking at right now in this picture are now in their late 20s and early 30s, which one makes me feel really old, but I wonder where is this beautiful girl whom God used to inspire my journey? I think, is she a wife? Is she a mom? Is she safe? Does she feel loved? And most importantly, does she know Jesus? I'll never really know this side of heaven, but I am forever grateful to her for her impact on my life and how that impact continues to affect so many. And when I think about this idea of looking back, you know, we hear this in scripture where it's not healthy to look back on things that God called you away from. Example, Lot's wife. 
you know, he was clearly calling her out of that season and away from a sinful existence into something good. But it is really healthy to look back and remember what God has called you towards. And I can look back at that season and at that trip and that special relationship with that precious little girl and know that that was the beginning of my journey and taking steps towards obedience to love a child that God had for me many years down the road and a ministry that God had for me many years down the road. You know, in the Old Testament, we talk about the concept of Ebenezer, and obviously that's not a common word that we use in, in our daily vernacular, but um, you might remember the song, Here I Raise My Ebenezer, and and you sing it in church and you think, okay, that's just a weird word or that's, you know, a Scrooge guy that we talk about at Christmas. But if you dive into what an Ebenezer was in the Old Testament, it was a stone of remembrance. It was a, a landmark that God's people placed to remember a time when God clearly spoke and gave direction or came through for his people. And for me, I share the story with you today because this is a very clear Ebenezer in my life where I can mark it firmly in my memory that God was paving the way even then when I was clueless and inexperienced and not even married yet, not even a mom yet. But that was a time and and an individual in a situation that he was using to mold me and to put me on a path to where he had me going. And so I share that today. Because I want to challenge you as we get started with establishing our mindset as Christian adoptive parents, where are you in your story today? Where does God have you? Is he speaking to your heart right now? Are you in the early stages of calling and obedience? Or are you in the throes of your process where it's so tedious and you just wonder if it's ever going to come to fruition? Or are you in a season where you are parenting your child and you're navigating all of the the personal details of their journey and their story and how to love them well and to steward them well, where are you in that? And it's helpful to look back to that time when God first spoke to you. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go forward in our conversation today. I can tell you the exact place and time when God clearly spoke to me. He had planted this seed in my heart years before with this experience with this precious little girl placing a coin in my hand. And so it cultivated in my heart a readiness for when God said it was time to act. And as I had shared, we had started life as a young family and life was pretty simple. And yes, we were sleep deprived because we had a baby and a four-year-old and my husband and I were driving on the road. We had just driven to see his family a few hours away for the Christmas holidays and his parents had graciously offered to let our boys stay with them for just a few days to give us some rest and some respite as young parents of toddler and newborn baby with colic and I can tell you the exact stretch of road that I was on when God clearly said to me, you know, there are times, can you think about times where you can almost hear the audible voice of God? I've had that happen a handful of times in my life, and this was one of those. And I just clearly heard him say in my spirit, Summer, you're going to adopt. And my heart was ready. And so I was like, yes, Lord, let's do this thing. And the struggle, which we will talk about in detail in this podcast is I'm like, okay, well, if you've called me, Lord, then let's get it done yesterday. You know, I was ready to go. And so I had a lot to learn in terms of patience and right timing and understanding that that calling was to prompt me to say yes and to be prepared for the child that he had for our family. And it's important to remember those moments and to look back on them because I'll say this for me personally, being an adoptive parent is the hardest thing that I have ever been called to. And the reason why is very simple. It has caused me to come face to face with a refining that I didn't know I needed. It has exposed lack of faith, patience, and complete control tendencies in my flesh. It has revealed selfishness and hidden areas desperately needing refining by the Holy Spirit. And 
Quite frankly, it continues to draw me closer to Jesus as I have walked through brokenness and a great deal of difficulty on this journey. And so I need to go back and remember my why and that calling and that Ebenezer. One was the little girl in Belize. And the second Ebenezer that I can go back to is that particular spot on a windy highway road um, in Arkansas, rural Arkansas, but I can tell you exactly where it is. And that is where I place my Ebenezer in remembrance of God saying, it's time, take steps forward. And I need to go back and remember my why and that calling and that time when God clearly spoke to me so that I can keep going when I get tired, when I feel worn down, or when I just feel ill-equipped to handle what is in front of me. And so for some of you listening, you need to look back and remember that time that the Lord clearly spoke because your days are filled with all the things in the current season that God has you on in your own unique time and place in your journey with adoption. For some of you, you're wrestling with your calling as you're listening to the sound of my voice. You are flooded with fear and uncertainty and all the reasons why you shouldn't keep going or why you shouldn't lay that yes on the table. And yet, you know, God is clearly speaking to your heart and prompting you to take that step of obedience. So the whole reason I have named this podcast called to love, well, we're going to dive deeper into that with every episode, but for now, suffice it to say this. Each of us are called to love God, love others, and share Jesus. That's the, the basis of all of the ministry work that I do. But for those of us who are called to adoption and foster care, because we're going to talk about that a lot on the show as well, that calling takes on a whole new meaning to love God, love others, and share Jesus as we run a very unique, a very challenging, but a very beautiful race. And so I want to leave you today with what it means to be called to love. It means to learn to trust God in a new way. Like everything else in life, this journey will not be perfectly mapped out for you. And out of obedience and trust in the Lord, you're going to have to step on one paving stone at a time as God illuminates the way and leads you. You're going to learn how to love in an entirely new way. You're going to learn a new language and sometimes a new culture. I mean, sometimes literally if your child comes home from a different country and then practically as you navigate the world of attachment and trauma and connection and grief and and all of the things that adoption encompasses, you're going to learn a new posture as the world around you will be curious and may not understand your calling. And we're going to talk about the importance of your response over reacting. And you're going to learn a new way to parent. This was a total shift for me. I was a bio mom and a boy mom. And then overnight, I became an adoptive mom and a girl mom. And that didn't come easy to me. And so it took a lot of learning and understanding that I needed to become a student of an entirely different method of parenting and to learn my child and her needs. You know, you've heard it said many times, but it bears repeating that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Let me share something I wish I understood much earlier in my journey, and that is this. Because God has called you to this, your journey of being qualified for this will carry on for the rest of your life. You will have never arrived. By the grace of God, He's going to guide you and shepherd you as you shepherd and steward the child or the children that He gives you. Adoption is not a process. It is a journey. Adoption is not a result. It is a choice to say yes and to love someone fully before you ever meet them. So as we close today and over the course of each episode, I want to leave you with a thought to ponder, a challenge to pray through, or some kind of an action step to take. And for today, our first episode together, I just want to invite you to take a moment and reflect on that moment when you first remember God's prompting in your heart towards adoption. What is your Ebenezer. You may be experiencing that initial nudge right now, and you're terrified to take another step. Hang with me. We're going to lean into that and what that looks like to take next steps. For others, you may be months or years into your adoption journey, and you're in the day-to-day or the challenges or just time itself has brought you to a place where it's hard to remember or even think back with joy and gratitude what that calling was, and where you were, and how far you've come. When it's hard, 
it's helpful to look back and remember when you were called to love. Remember when God gently whispered to your heart and nudged you toward that step of opening your heart and your life to the life-changing journey of adoption. For me, it was that little girl placing that coin in my hands with complete love and generosity. And years later, my heart was ready for that yes when God prompted. Going back to that Ebenezer, the landmarks placed in your life when God spoke, when God called. So here are your questions to ponder as I leave you today. Where is that Ebenezer in your life? Think back to where you were and how much God has grown you and changed you since then. Think about how he has provided for the adoption itself and the precious life you now know as your child. Think about how he has sustained you through each day since. I love the quote, so far you've survived 100% of your bad days. And this is a really good reminder as you walk out the adoption journey because there are going to be hard days that come in different forms. And yes, you will survive them. In the show notes today, I am sharing a link to that picture of me with those children. I would love for you to see it. And I would love to invite you to take a look and grab my free download that walks you through each of the questions that I just mentioned. Use it to pray, use it as journal prompts, and process where God has you and where he wants to lead your heart and grow you as you continue on this journey with him and with your family.